Hello, and today I have an unusual video for you, because today I hope this video is something that you will never ever find useful, because today I want to talk to you about how to dry off your camera. So if you drop your camera in water, heaven forbid, or it gets absolutely drowned when you're out and about, this video is going to be incredibly important for you because there's a lot of mistakes people make when they try drying off their camera. Um, my background before uh, I became a professional, before I became a professional photographer, if I can even say it, is um, I used to repair cameras. So I came at photography from the other side, so to speak. So um, I've seen an awful lot of water water damage over the years to digital cameras, to their optics, and to the print circuit boards and whatnot inside. So I'm going to try and help you here now on how to dry out your camera properly. So um. Let's get into it. So heaven forbid, you're out, you're shooting, your camera gets absolutely destroyed, you even drop it in water, or your camera bag gets covered in water for some reason. You fell and slipped in a river, you're out in the sea, massive rogue wave comes in, absolutely drowns your camera. What do you do? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is panic. But the first thing you should do is actually wipe off any excess water immediately. The second thing, and this is by far and away the most important thing is, keep your camera up vertical, open the battery door on the camera, and pop out the battery as soon as you possibly can. Now, what you're gonna do next is get a cleaning cloth, a tissue, anything along those lines, dry off around the battery door while the camera is still being held up vertically, and then you're just gonna double check it and dry it off completely. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around to all the little side flaps, we're gonna dry all those off straight away, and we're gonna dry off the hot shoe. Then we're gonna check the card slots to make sure they're dry. Once all that's dry, the next thing you're going to do then is try and get home as soon as possible. That is going to be vital. So how do you pack your camera when you're going home? Well, in the last video I talked to you about the essentials I put in my camera bag. One being silica gel patches and the other being a shower cap. So I can put the shower cap around the camera for the simple reason being is you're going to put the camera back in your camera bag again because it's going to be protected. You're going to fire some silica gel patches in there, pop it into your camera bag upside down and you're going to head away off home. Now, why did I say upside down? Because when you look at your camera bag, and if you think about it, when I said to you at the start, make sure the battery compartment, which is in the bottom of the camera, that that's dry. So when it's upside down, any water that's in the camera is more than likely going to be on the top of the camera. So it's going to be in all the control buttons and things like that. So when the camera's upside down, that's going to help the water naturally through gravity go back out. So that's the first thing. The silica gel patches there then are there to catch any water that's inside. Hopefully you'll be home incredibly soon. The next step then is vital to you saving your camera. We're gonna pretend we're home. So we're back home, we're finished with the shower cap, we've our silica gel patches and everything taken away. Now, the most common mistake I see people making here is, the first thing they'll get is something like a blower and they'll start blowing water out. Or otherwise, the second most important thing people think is, oh my God, I need heat here. I need to get a hair dryer and I need to dry this out as quickly as possible. That is an incredibly bad move. Because if you think about it, with a blower and with a hairdryer, what are you doing? You're forcing air out, forcing it down in, so any water that's gone into those controls, you're pushing it further into the camera body. What you should do here, and this is the real serious trick in keeping your camera, I suppose, alive, we'll say, is to use a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yes, I said a vacuum cleaner because that, that's personally what I do and what I would use. Now, the one thing you notice is my camera is still completely intact as of this stage now. I haven't taken the lens off, so that is also incredibly vital. So what I'll do is I'll get a vacuum cleaner and I'll try and suck out any moisture that's there out of the camera itself. So that's the first thing. I'm gonna dry it off completely properly then as well as I possibly can, because again, you have to remember when you're sucking the water out, there's gonna be a bit more surface water. So we try and dry all that out as much as we possibly can. The next thing we're gonna do then is take our lens off. And what we'll do is we'll hold the lens, put the camera down flat, hold the lens straight up and lift it straight up. And what we're looking for here now is water around here around the flange. And then we turn this upside down quickly and we check for water around here. You look inside for water in the optics of the lens itself, and then you look inside for water in around the sensor. Again, you'll try and clean that off and dry that off as best as you possibly can. So, and the crazy thing about it here is, if your, let's say, if your camera sensor appears to be fairly dry, what you could do is use a hairdryer at very low levels. Just to blow a bit of heat in from a bit of distance. You're not looking to push the air in. All you're trying to do is fire a small bit of warm air at the sensor itself. Okay, so that's, 
that's us at a fairly safe place there now. Most important thing is do not plug your battery back in or do not join, put your battery back in I should say. Under any circumstances at this stage, I know you'll be tempted because it'll be killing you and you'll want to know is your camera still alive. Do not put the battery back in your camera. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna get your camera, you're gonna get a whole lot of silica gel patches or you're gonna get rice or something along those lines and you might say, rice, what are you gonna use rice for? Rice is gonna to help to draw out any moisture. So what I would do is I would get another plastic bag, I'd get the rice in it and I'd get a needle and I'd prick a whole lot of little holes in the bag. I'd leave my camera open like that with the sensor open. I'd, if they have a tilting screen, pull the screen out a small bit too as well because you probably have some moisture in around there too as well. I'd pop them all into a second bag. So you have your rice in a bag and there's all tiny little pinprick holes so moisture can be sucked in along. Then I'm gonna put this camera like this into the actual bag with the rice. Our silica gel batch, patches are actually loads better. So now we come to the lens. What are we gonna do with the lens? Our worst case scenario, lenses, if you had a few of them in your camera bag at the time and it fell in water. So the first thing and most important thing is make sure there's no water outside. Have a look in underneath the back of the optics. Is there water around the place there? And this is where a lot of people make a very common mistake, again, with lenses. What they'll do is they'll pop the lens in like that in the hope that water will actually drip out the bottom and they'll be able to catch it. Now, that might actually work if you keep it in a cool environment. But what you probably find is the water is after lodging somewhere inside and it just won't come out. So what we need to do is try and evaporate the water. So you actually need to turn the lens upside down because there are quite a few earring points and holes and whatnot around the place there. So we're gonna put this again in a separate bag with silica gel patches or with the rice too as well, like I was explaining earlier. And we're gonna hope that once this is inside in a warm environment, that any water that's inside is gonna evaporate and it's gonna come out or is gonna be sucked out then via the silica gel patches. That will hopefully solve the problem with our lenses. Now, what makes this all the more serious is if your camera is not water resistant. And there are people out there who say, oh, my camera is water resistant, that's gonna be fine. Now, if your camera is water resistant, just think about this for a second. It's water resistant, so it's designed to stop water falling down top of it. It's not designed to stop water under pressure. So again, if you get a blower, and if you start blowing in around those camera controls to get any water out, you're gonna be pushing that water down at force. It's not waterproof it is water resistant. Like you see, you hear of watches that are water resistant, yet you go for a shower, they're fine. You go swimming with them and you get all condensation inside. Why? Because they're not designed to be submerged in water. Cameras are not designed to be submerged in water. They're also not designed for water at pressure to be blown into them. So never use a blower or a hairdryer. Always use a vacuum cleaner. Honestly, vacuum cleaner is gonna solve any issue you're going to have. You know, it really is vitally important to take the camera battery out. It, it, that really is. Camera battery out and use a vacuum cleaner. The two of those, and then dry it out inside an airing cover or a hot press. I really hope this video has helped you save your camera, save a few lenses or anything at all. Um, thanks again for watching everyone and a um, few more cool videos on the way fairly soon. So uh, until then, see you out there.